So we've, we've, we've finished basically going through the entire budget. Um, the other thing that you should know is a discussion came up of the uh, regional school budget. And we, we voted on a motion to um, go to 6%. And in other words, add 2% to the budget and take the money either from ARPA or from uh, free cash. Uh, we left the, the option open for that because we couldn't decide what, what really was the, the, the best way to do it. Um, so anyway, that, that we, did, we did pass, that motion passed unanimous. And that was to recommend to the council? That was to recommend to the council, yes. Okay. All right. Are there any questions? Kathy as vice chair. I just want to add, and I'm all knows this, that as of today, we didn't have financial orders. So we've written a draft that says we're in support of this or that, but we don't have them yet. So Bob, you know, that feeds into the adding 2% and, and where it would come from. So we're, we're trying to get to final and, and we meet tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. I do want to also add that the report is very long, so Kathy drafted a executive summary, which <laughs> is you, about Kathy. one and a half pages long. So um, we tried to highlight our what we what we what we concluded. And and the votes on the motions took half a page because I didn't know what they on the financial orders because I didn't actually know what they were. So, okay, Councilor Haneke. As also a member of finance. Yeah, I just wanted to add that we took that motion on Friday with a, I think there's a hope that we might be able to more clarify that motion tomorrow. <laughs> so okay. so such, such that as Kathy's referring to, there's, there's a lot of empty space in this draft for what do the actual recommendation, recommended motions look like, because we're hoping to be able to clarify. We have a list of orders and what numbers are on that, but the manager has said he'll work with us on what things might need to look like. So it might be clarified by the time you guys get the report. Okay. And the the council will get the report uh, by Thursday, I guess, is when it's due. <laughs> Thank you. I, and um, we'll make sure that all counselors get it. Um, are there any other comments from finance? Okay. Uh, uh, Geo Pardon me, Lynn, if I may. Bob, just the upcoming finance committee topics uh, for the eleventh of uh, uh, track and field. It's we plan for the discussion on the track and field for the eleventh. That's what we plan. Just to let thank the you, because then we'll try to have that on the agenda for the seventeenth. Right. Yeah, and. Okay, and that, and we will also then have a public forum on the 17th. Correct, and a quick note, the council had referred all three requests of the regional school committee to the finance committee. So we have a draft council financial order for that third funding piece for the finance committee to consider, and that would be included in the public forum on the 17th. If the finance committee recommends it, the council will get to decide what to don't do. Don't we have water and sewer rates also? Water and sewer, I believe we're going to try and do that um, tomorrow, get through the water and through water and sewer. I know it's a lot, but there's water and sewer optional uh, tax exemption. Right. Um, one other, hopefully quick one. And then if the committee can get through those and the track, then we'll be on target. But we have an, an extra meeting date saved just in case the committee can't. We'll, we'll take up those other items on that. Actual Never date. say hopefully quick. <laughs> <laughs> it's a jinx. Um, George, you have your hand up. Oh, the public forum on the 17th is the public forum on the budget. Is that correct? No, the oh. public forum on the 17th. Uh, I'll get to that in the president's report because I've written that down as future agenda items. Okay. Um, GOL. Uh -huh. So just in case you were looking for more things to do this week, um, GOL's got a doozy of a week as well. We've got um, interviews for uh, Charter Review Committee positions on Tuesday and Wednesday, tomorrow and Wednesday. Uh, 
beginning at 6.30. Um, so you all are welcome to to attend those. Please let Athena know if you plan to attend. Nope, you can attend to Just the show up. You don't That's fine to too. No. <laughs> Thank you. Just show up. We'd love to have you. Um, and then we will also be doing uh, finance committee interviews on June 13th from 6.30 to 7.30. So um, if you'd like to, to attend for any of those, just show up. And um, can you let us know what the deadline for the statements of interest is for the finance committee? Yeah, the deadlines for this finance committee statements of interest are 5 p.m. on June 5th. I have the email pulled up. I was ready. <laughs> and I'd like to thank George Ryan for helping to coordinate the finance committee and uh, interviews and Lynn to help for helping coordinate the um, charter review committee interviews. And let me just mention, we have and 12 Athena. candidates for the charter review that submitted their caps. We started out with 19. Submitted their statements of interest. Statements of interest, I'm sorry. And uh, we started out with 19 and um, after three, three reminders and several phone calls, we ended up with 12. So the applications are still open for finance committee up until the that deadline that Anna mentioned. Correct. For the statements of interest. Right. Thank there, you. There was one additional applicant that came in today. Yes. Thank you so much. Can I assume that Jones Library Committee, <laughs> uh, Pam, anything else to add to today? Actually, I'm going to insert the uh, the CRC report because I, I should have done that. Um, we are we are prepping for um, interviews for the planning board vacancies and the deadline for statements of interest and any any CAFs uh, that may want to show up um, are all due on the 14th. And the interview date it appears to be the 28th. Our regular meeting. No, what's the date? I'm with 25th. 25th, excuse me. The the interview will be our regular meeting date, unfortunately. Um, so that's, that's, that's that. So you won't be bringing those recommendations to us until our meeting in July. That's fine. Correct. So we will end up having to ask for an extension, perhaps, perhaps of the, um, uh, any, of the, the current members, if there's something happening, um, or if there's some reason that that um, we, anyway, we may have to ask for an extension. Uh, can I just mention, because that came as a shock to a member, I, I think it might've been two or three years ago that they were extended until replaced, that we make sure that people know they may be extended and that we get those letters out uh, because I don't want people to be um, shocked that all of a sudden they have to serve past June 30, June 30th. Um, Jennifer, you had your hand up. Okay. All right. Uh, town service, TSO, Andy. No, nothing additional to it. Sorry, even send it in writing. Okay. Liaison reports. Any liaison reports? None. Town manager's report. Paul? Yes, thank you. So you have a written report in your in your packet, if you have a chance to look at it. <clears throat> What's not on there, or I did put it in there, uh, we had our bond rating confirmed at a double A plus with a stable rating, which is really good for us. Um, it, they, and I'll, set, I'll put out, the, I'll send you the entire, um, bond rating analysis. They mentioned our seasons management team, our well well embedded financial policies, uh, consistent operating surpluses, and our uh, commitment to OPED and pension, even though that we have a high liability. Those are all things that we try to address through our budget process. Um, I really compliment our, our finance team who were excellent at um, making the presentation to the bond um, analysts. And so it's a really good news. Where we are, where we are hobbled somewhat, is in our um, demographics. So our income as a town is relatively low, which helps us in certain situations because they have the, all the students. But in in this situation, when the bond rating agencies look at you, they really like to see wealth of the town, and that's how you get lower interest rates. Just like it happens in the real world, the more money you have, the lower your interest rates. Um, so. Um, 
we struggle against that as compared to some of our neighboring communities. Um, but we make our argument uh, as best we can that the wealth of our students actually should reflect not the students themselves, but some of the families. We just say like, we're actually not that much different from Massachusetts as a whole. They hear that, they identify that in their analysis, but it doesn't change their fundamental sort of metrics that they apply to us like they do every other community in Massachusetts. Again, where we are, AA plus is really a good credit rating. The one step up, it would be to AAA, but we're not there. <clears throat> and I think it'd be very challenging for us to get there unless our demographics change dramatically. So good news, credit our team, credit the history of the town's finances and its fiscal policies over time. You know, we can show consistency and uh, commitment to strong financial um, um, rules and, that guide our decision-making. So, and the council as well. Um, second, you know, I think I want to mention the fire chief's uh, farewell uh, is the June 21st. I mean, uh, Lynn mentioned that earlier. I hope you'll all be there. Um, it, it should, there's a lot of people interested in saying goodbye to him in a positive way um, to Chief Nelson. Um, so there's a, an event at Courtyard at, Mar at, at the Marriott, uh, which has been donated for this event. Then there's a post party with alcohol from six to eight at uh, the public house on University Drive. Um, <clears throat> we haven't announced, that this is out, but we received uh, the town or school district received $600,000 grant to purchase three electric school buses, which is great. You know, it, uh, this is federal money that came through. Senator Warren fought really hard for this money and it really helped us to apply for it. So there's a lot of money coming to Massachusetts for electric school buses. So we'll, see, we'll just share that information more broadly. Um, and the other thing there's, a, during the um, public comment, there's a reference to a, count, a memo. And I try to figure, so it's a memo that was written, I think the memo was referenced, was from 13 months ago that was sent to the um, school committee and to the council in May of 2023. And I think that's the memo that is being referenced. I gotta double check that with the uh, school school people. But I'll share that memo with you so you can see what was being discussed. A memo like that has not gone out this year, but that was, we were, we had many of the same conversations we had this year, last year, if you recall, about the, um, the fiscal sustainability of this school district. That was when we had, you know, the superintendent was Mike Morris, the finance director was Sean Mangano, and it was a different sort of makeup of people. I think this year we will still suggest something, but it'll be, you know, we have to wait for the new superintendent to get here and have that conversation first before we start to share that out. So just so you know, where I, I was trying to figure out where that was coming from. I think it's last year's memo that's getting shared around now because it's dated May 8th or 9th of 2023. But I'll send it to you so you have, you can see what, where it came from, where I think it came from, if that's what the reference is. Paul, just to add to that, the motion that, um, was made by school committee member Irv Rhodes was building off of what you said in your budget message. Uh, and that was the, that was, it failed. Yep. Uh, and so, so let's, let's see what, uh, uh, but it was straight off the budget me okay. message. Maybe that's, maybe that's the reference point then. Yeah. Okay. Are there questions of the town manager? Bob Hagner. Yeah. Paul, I just have one question. Um, mm -hmm. How important are our policies on free cash and stabilization fund amounts? Uh, how important are they to our bond rating? They reference them in terms of where we where we stand on with free cash, and um, they like to see that there's um, surpluses every year. Something they look at, and I'll sh I'll share the, the entire document with you so you can look at what they say about it. Okay, thanks. Are there any other questions of the town manager? Uh, okay. Um, yes, Kathy. Sorry, I was slow on the uptake. Um, Paul, I, I know where you'd like to think everything is done on the capital plan, but because of the staffing shortage that we had, it would be good if at some point we could have, it was mentioned tonight, um, what we started doing as a process is older appropriations that hadn't been spent re mm -hmm. Re bringing them back in and in the last couple of years that was enough that it lowered another expenditure so if that could be updated 
that so, would be yeah so that gets updated every year this comptroller sends something out around this time saying if you don't if you're not going to spend your money by june 30th i need to know and then that that gets happened that happens during the summer right but we we basically we got the same table that we had a year ago in other words there wasn't time to update it mm -hmm. um so it was as of a year ago here was the Three years, and and I did understand. You know, we 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 we, we, had, we had pinch we hitters that were starting July one. Which yeah, I know it was it was a uh, 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 quite quite a performance to be able to jump in in the middle yeah. of things the way he did. So he's great. Yeah, thank you. Anything else for the town manager? Okay, let me just mention under uh, president's comments or report. There's no written report this time. I will send you an email reminding you of our upcoming meetings that include the joint meetings with the library uh, trustees and the meeting start time. Uh, I'll also send you a reminder to fill in the um, post retreat item. Uh, there are two upcoming events at which we have proclamation readings. One is the pride event on the 13th. And the other is actually this Sunday, which is Race Amity Day at Mill River. So I'll be sending emails on those. Um, are there any questions? I'm prepared to go on and talk about future agenda items unless there's questions at this time. Uh, on next, next agenda, which is the 17th of June, I have two public forums. One will be on the Gage Family Land and the other one is on the high school track and field, assuming it's ready, okay? Uh, we also have on our agenda, uh, and then we'll vote those on the agenda afterwards. Um, we also have on our agenda, the water and sewer rates, the optional tax exemptions, and if it's ready, the nuisance bylaw from, GO, from uh, CRC. It has to, I think it has to come to, to GOL before it comes back. Oh, to the council. it does. Okay, so that's not going to happen. Um, and appointments for Charter Review Committee and Finance Committee. Uh, Councilor Haneke. Sorry, I was slow. Um, a question for the president and the manager that that just jogged my memory. Um, the strategic partnership agreement signed with UMass had required meetings between the chancellor and I believe you and the president and vice president of the council. The chancellor's now been in office for year. a year or so. Have those twice yearly meetings that were required happened at all in the last year? <clears throat> they haven't officially, um, but we have talked about what time of year we want those to take place. Um, I can't remember that what where we settled. I think we've talked about like January and August, something like right before this each semester. We, we did have started. one initial meeting. Was it with the chancellor? When yeah, I didn't think that counted as the um, maybe it wasn't. The I don't think that was, one. The it was more like a partnership. meet and greet, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah. So, so I wouldn't count that. Yeah. yeah, so we were putting these on the calendar, sort of on a recurring basis, so every we know what months right. are going to happen in. And and one of the issues we would like to bring up with him is the issue of housing. So, so to, just so for the counselors, you start to think about it, we're looking at August to, mm -hmm. as the time frame for his, okay. his schedule. Uh, Councilor Haneke, you have your hand up. Okay, are there any other questions, comments? Uh, Lynn? Yes. The uh, motion that was postponed tonight would also be on the agenda for the 17th. We'll need to figure out how to take that up because the charter says regular or special meeting. So the first um, thing that we're doing the evening of the 17th is the, is the special meeting with the Jones Library Board of Trustees. So we may need to schedule an extra special meeting before that meeting oh to goodness. take up the motion that was postponed. Just We accept the challenge. And, and Athena, it may be moot. I mean, if something has already happened, motion doesn't make any sense so we can you, you can weigh that in the equation we'll, we'll of still timing. need to schedule it on an agenda so we'll, but we'll figure that out before the 17th thank you yes there are uh, several items that are coming that came from tso okay that were referenced in one is 
Henry Street. Yeah. And uh, there was sort of recommendation from the committee about um, acceptance of the um, special safety zone status that is provided by statute. And the other is uh, adoption of uh, speed limits in uh, chapter 9017C, I believe it is. And do you anticipate those by the 17th? We did make recommendations at the last meeting that is mentioned, and I said it was going to be covered in the next report because we weren't on the yep. agenda tonight. Got it. You're, thank you. And I have just added those here. Kathy? So I just have a question, Andy. Um, did you discuss speed humps, bumps, platforms, whatever you want to call it, a bump in the road that stops you from going fast? I, I want to make and sure. And it can be a little bump. In. It can be a big bump. It, and Henry. And then, and no, because um, Stop. I, I'm just was that discussed because for Henry Street in particular, as opposed to just a lower speed zone? And it's if it was or wasn't, I just would like at some point the council to understand is what is the aversion to doing it, um, since it is a really good way to slow crap. I, I don't want to get into the debate. I'm yet. just asking for future agenda items if this yeah. this is. No, no, uh, that actually is included because when you accept a safety zone, it's based upon an engineer's report, which I will reference in the subsequent report that I had, and they brought up that topic. Um, but uh, the automatic thing would be the lowering of speed limit but um, the other is implicit um, or explicit rather that um, it's part of the consideration that would need to follow. It was not part of the first motion, however. First motion is to accept it as a safety zone. Okay, thank you. Uh, I just wanna go back, Pam Rooney. Uh, did you say both planning board and ZBA by July 15th? Just planning board. Just planning board. did ZBA. Oh, okay, thank you. That's what I thought. Um, are there any other questions or comments from counselors? From the town manager? From the clerk of the council? I would like to celebrate a tradition with a round of applause. Hello? And her graduation. <laughs> We did that. All right. I'm going to make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, we're going to move on. Uh, Councilor Hannick. Uh, Councilor Hannick. Aye. Uh, Bob Hagner. Aye. Councilor Lord. Aye. Pam Rooney. Aye. Councilor Ryan. Aye. Kathy Shane. Yes. Dan Andy Steinberg. Yes. Jennifer Taub. Yes. Councilor Walker. Yes. Pat DeAngelis. Aye. Anna Devon Gough. Aye. Councilor Rette. Aye. And Lynn Griesmer's and I, the meeting's adjourned. Thank you. It's only 10 12.